together. Have your, you had have a nice refreshment, or you have a bowl again, and we come to the, ne to the next item of this afternoon, uh, somewhere it's night already. And I see Hans Günther, you are waiting already, and traveling about, no, uh, well, we spoke together and I'm glad to see you again since year, two since years when I met again at Salzburg last time. Well, uh, Hans Gunther, the, your lecture will be the practical experiences with the Born Pierce scala and several equal division of the octave Edo scales. Hans Gunther Lock. Uh, was born 1974 in Halle in Germany, then studied composition and music theory at Leipzig Academy of Music and Theatre. And then in year 2000, he went to the Estonian Academy of Music and Theatre, I think that's in Tallinn, <laughs> and to, to continue your studies. And in the years 2004 to six, uh, he supplement, you supplement, supplemented yourself in Hamburg Academy of Music and Theatre in multimedia composition with Georg Haidu. We will listen to him next. Since 2008, you are a philosophy degree a student at the Estonian Academy of Music and Theatre. Hans Gunther Locks oeuvre comprises predominantly electroacoustic music and chamber works. He experiments with light, video, sensors, robotic instruments, and other technologies connecting different forms of art. Additionally, he is strongly interested in microtonal possibilities of organizing pictures using since around seven years, mainly in the Bohm Pierce scala, if you prefer. In years uh, 2002 to seven, Hans Gunther Lock worked as a consultant at the electronic music studio of EAMT. Is that in Estonia? Yes, it's the same uh, Academy of Music and Theatre in Tallinn. Ah, that's just, mm. ah, in Tallinn. It's uh, the English abbreviation ah, English school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Well, since 2002, you have also been lecturer teaching amongst others sound synthesis, algorithmic composition, life electronics, and Western microtonal music of the 20th century. Since 2007, Hans Kunterlock has been working as the head of a new media workshop in the Estonian Academy of Arts. Well, I. I'm looking forward to your lecture, and I'm very interested. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Johannes, for this nice introduction. And uh, I am actually in this, at the same Estonian Academy of uh, Music and Theatre here in Tallinn, and we have here a wonderful new, uh, new um, um, electronic music classes with a lot of loudspeakers. But now I want to share my screen for to start my uh, presentation and I share, don't forget to share the uh, computer sound because I have some uh, sound examples too. So, and let's uh, go here. Oops. And let's start the slideshow. So, Thank you very much and uh, for inviting uh, to this uh, um, conference, uh, Micro uh, Small is Beautiful. And uh, I remember it was really uh, uh, a very uh, pleasure to uh, two years ago. And uh, maybe if we say two years ago, I looked uh, in uh, with this theoretical approach uh, more forward. Now, I will look a little bit more backward and talk about my exper practical experiences with uh, microtonality um, in uh, or during composition and uh, other practical uh, skills. So, of course, uh, generally, uh, um, I agree with my uh, with uh, 
uh, Matthew, for, who uh, expressed his uh, dissatisfaction uh, of um, the 12 tone equal uh, tempered scale. And I felt the same, and I can say I, I have since more than 10 years, I have uh, never composed any more in 12 tone equal. So, okay, and uh, now I. No, what is the. Yeah, okay, that was too fast. So, of course, um, I started uh, first experiences in microtonality. Hello? Yeah. First experience in microtonality um, uh, was in Bowl and Pierce, and um, Bowl and Pierce I um, found when I studied with uh, Georg Haido and um, also with um, Manfred Stantke in Hamburg, uh, and, and, um, and I'm very thankful to, uh, to them both uh, for this uh, information and this uh, experience and how to uh, find a way in uh, such complicated but very fruitful uh, um, topic as microtonality. So, of course, uh, Paul and Pierce, there's a lot of uh, different notation uh, vices, of course. Uh, I also point, pointed here out the um, muller Heido uh, notation system, what uses uh, six stuff lines. Uh, of course, I promise I, one time I want to learn it, but of course, uh, for uh, pragmatical reasons, I um, I um, Choose then have chosen another way to uh, just uh, map it on a synthesizer and the A. Uh, maybe hope you hear the sound. And uh, and then just uh, write uh, write down uh, the pitches. What are not the right pitches? But uh, and then uh, transform uh, uh, transcribe every instrumental. Um, um, instrumental notation to uh, the appropriate um, um, transcription what is uh, readable for so next is of course uh, of course one of my uh, largest works for the uh, for Paul and Pierce was the uh, violin concerto 2016 um, first performance in Tallinn and um, I was glad to uh, find uh, my brother Gerhard uh, he is also here uh, listening us and uh, he will agree to um, study the solo uh, solo um, part of and so just around a year we um, trained um, trained uh, microtonal um, intonation and um, so we have uh, and um, so but uh, maybe I want to uh, just uh, just play a little um, little excerpt of this uh, of this uh, violin concerto and we have also here hopefully we have here yeah the notation so <laughs> Uh, and so on. So, yeah, what I have done in um, reality, I have uh, created two scores. One score, I wrote down everything in um, the so called synthesizer transcription so I can play all, everything on the synthesizer for hearing what it is. And uh, so, if I see here from uh, bar 60. I can play that here, and for the violinist, uh, the violinist of course has to uh, read here fr from the uh, practical uh, score. So, and okay, next. So, 
Of course, uh, he used uh, some Park Martin notation using uh, quarter tones. Uh, so it's not real quarter tones, but uh, as we uh, can start from every um, open string again uh, with the notations, that uh, was a quite uh, proper way how to notate. And of course, for the higher positions, so I just uh, was thinking in virtual, uh, like virtual um, um, open strings. So just a ball and pierce fifth higher here by the uh, B natural and then the F sharp here notated. And uh, so, but of course, what to do with the ensemble? Yeah. So if the no, this is the, still the solo vi vi violin positions, but let's jump uh, jump further. And uh, what to do with the uh, ensemble? So we have um, uh, we have the um, of course we have the uh, scoratura systems. I choose I have chosen some interlocking um, system where. Um, one, for instance, one violin is uh, like this, and the other, in the so-called, I named it an A tuning, and the B tuning is, and then. Uh, sorry, the, sorry to interrupt, but the the uh, the sound is very uh, soft. The uh, the synthesizer sound. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Georg. Uh, I, yeah, so I will see that I. Um, so then. Is it better now? I'm afraid it's not. It seems like the sound is going through the through your microphone, the built-in microphone, and not through your audio card. Uh, uh, maybe you have a do you have like an, an, an audio uh, like an interface or a port on this no, microsynth application that you have to set separately? Uh, I have uh, I have set it uh, to the same uh, to the built-in output. I have no uh, other sound card in the moment. And uh, set it to Zoom. Not to build in. Okay. Uh, to uh, then I have to put it to zoom. Okay, Michael. If we go here, so I uh, it is it is, and maybe I have after the close the microsynth. And and then open it again. It might might be that uh, is the solution. But the sound for a sound file file was okay. So and now is it better? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, if you change the uh, the sound card, it, uh, the software will not do it. Okay, uh, we have um, we have and the B tuning, and then if every uh, every uh, string player has only to play the uh, minor third and the uh, tritone uh, related to the um, to the uh, open string, then. And the B tuning, what makes it much easier for to learn for uh, the uh, string player and the ensemble, and then I get interlocking this, I get, uh, get all the all the pitches. Okay, there are also flashlets. I use the third and the fifth harmonic. So. Okay, another piece where I ha use the same idea. It's not hundred uh, percent. The same interlocking, because the uh, violoncello is something a uh, combination uh, between uh, A and B uh, tuning. I have used for the uh, string quartet, and let's listen to to the piece. So here we can see the the score, and I will. Play the
so unfortunately we have not time for more so and um, of course uh, another approach of course is uh, if you have uh, think on wind instruments of course wind instruments uh, can have different uh, uh, fingerings but they are often very complicated but fortunately we have some um, specialized instruments for the bowl and pier scale as the bowl and pierce clarinet uh, and uh, and um, alt modified alto recorder and then I I uh, made handicraft by myself and built this um, tubular bell instrument so and um, and this I applied okay I applied in a piece uh, this is the uh, it's named um, uh, deep square number three of course it's uh, it's a series of uh, pieces of course uh, uh, for different I have tried out the um, same composition and ideas for different uh, combinations of pole and pierce instruments but uh, let's see then I have here uh, I should have here the video of the performance of this piece and So, and uh, then we have here the score, and so it's I think it should be this this place. So, mm. sorry. Next is that uh, I, uh, I am very happy that I had the opportunity to uh, participate at the Zena Monik Summer Camp at Gesundheit Institute in Hillsborough in 2019. And of course it was a, it was a big uh, challenge also for me. I'm not a professional violin player and uh, they asked me to play violin in three of, uh, okay, beside Bowl and Piers, what I have studied by myself uh, quite good in three or well, three different uh, microtonal systems and uh, one was um, 31 EDO and uh, the so we played or mostly we recorded pieces uh, there in on the side and uh, so I will play now the piece Mirage uh, from uh, uh, Nicholas Osborne, a young uh, American composer, and um, so uh, one moment. I think this is. Oh, this is not this. I can close. So, the beginning of the piece.
Nicholas Osborne, Mirage, was the one piece, and of course uh, here I show you how I uh, approached uh, this uh, problem. Of course, you have uh, uh, have uh, so you have eighteen uh, pitches in um, uh, or seventeen uh, different pitches uh, in the uh, in the fifth, and of course uh, if we uh, if we align that to the diatonic positions, then I found there are five uh, positions for the first finger and five positions for the second finger, uh, four positions for the third finger and three positions for the um, uh, fourth finger, or if you think four, four is then the fifth, then you have also four positions for the fourth finger. Uh, finger. And in this way, I uh, note, uh, note, noted in, uh, in my uh, uh, in my part uh, for to for to learn and for to get an imagination uh, what are the positions of uh, 31 EDO so and uh, next is uh, 9 EDO of course 9 EDO uh, was a little bit less uh, to learn because we have in a fifth of 666.7 cents uh, it's a narrower narrower fifth uh, we have only um, four fingers. It's it's uh, really very similar to Bowl and Pierce because uh, you just uh, play four fingers and uh, just uh, be aware that the fourth finger is not uh, doubling the uh, next open string, with exception of the of the uh, G string. Because uh, if it's narrower, then of course you get uh, a gap, and then uh, then uh, the composer Stephen Weigel wanted to, to have also the lowest and so that I have just one position I have to slide with the finger in the on the G string. So and uh, let's uh, let's uh, play also also this uh, piece uh, so uh, Stephen Weigel Zones of Lasting Novelties is for two violins we, re we recorded it only I uh, had to record both the uh, violin parts and uh, then trombone and synthesizer. So, uh, and now I come to the last experiences in last experiences in uh, microtonality. So, it is um, our um, international uh, online solfege learning circle. So, as um, every year we uh, have in Estonia, in Perno, it's a little city in uh, southern is southern Estonia on the coast. Uh, we have every January, we have a little contemporary music festival. So it's organized by the Estonian Arnold Schoenberg Society together. We do it together with my uh, good friend and colleague Andros Kallastu. And um, so then came up the idea why not to, uh, uh, to make a festival with um, uh, microtonality. And in this festival, uh, we uh, it was this year in January, of course, through the pandemic situation, so everything was uh, online. But uh, we had uh, the luck uh, have as uh, online participants to have uh, Stephen Weigel, uh, Paul Ehrlich, and um, and Douglas Blumeyer, 
uh, for, uh, for the main speeches. And then we organized every day an attempt to sing in microtonal scales. And we choose the 22 EDO system because it is, uh, on the one hand, it is, it is um, yeah, of course, it is, the, it is quite different from uh, that what uh, we normally know from 12 uh, equal or from this uh, mean tone based uh, systems and uh, it has so interesting the scales like Su Super Pi 7, Pajara 10, or Porcupine 7 and 8 and Machine and Orwell. So of course Machine is in the scale, it's, it's 11 EDO because 11 EDO is included. So of course the goal is to offer possibility for, for listening and singing, singing as, uh, supported by pitches produced from a synthesizer. So. So that is uh, this uh, um, initiative. Uh, we decided then to continue at every second uh, Sunday, and everybody, uh, and we also plan it to continue in um, in um, in uh, September, and um, and also 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 we. Um, we um, have the systems that, um, of course, are technically I was um, uh, guiding the whole sessions, but of course I could not do it uh, alone because uh, because um, it is uh, was quite technically complicated. And uh, thanks to Andros Kalas too, who hosted the whole the whole in uh, learning circle and uh, then of course generally everybody could contribute some little exercises or whatever and uh, one of the most prolific uh, attendees was uh, Johan, Johan Inua while I saw him also here in our conference and uh, thanks to him we had a lot of uh, material what we could to uh, could uh, to try to sing so Okay, uh, the, it looks uh, something like that, so that we had a Jitsi and in parallel a clean feed, another system what uh, provides low latency and uh, high quality audio. And um, of course, and at the end, uh, I just compiled, um, we named that uh, Codex Pernoensis, Liber Exercitorium at Musica Microtonalum vol Volume 1. I can show that it's not still 100% ready, this little book. So, but uh, we want to, everything what we have done, we want to, want to here compile it here in just one book or document. So, of course, here we have uh, also used names and abbreviations for the 22 EDO intervals. And then first I created some the chromatic pitches and uh, then um, it's a bunch of uh, just uh, scales uh, what we started to sung, sing and later we uh, went uh, stepped forward uh, to some more um, more oh I forgot here to add uh, Johannes name this is Johannes composition so and uh, so we, so then here is a little study in uh, Orwell 9 and I just will briefly play. Of course it is uh, mostly we did it like this if you have here something in harmonic chord progression or something like a little composition uh, that is uh, mostly first composed and then you derive you make it easier and easier and then you can um, uh, so you can have some sim more simple singing exercises and then that is the whole thing. So, of course, um, there were of course problems with, uh, with uh, hearing each other and uh, so it, uh, it, it's never perfectly uh, sung together. And of course, we, all, we are all no, not professionals and it is, of course, it is not, not perfect. Please forgive it us, but I, I'll unless to the, that problems I will even try to share uh, what we have sung here. So this is my Orwell study. Of course, it maybe this was um, one of um, 
the more chromatic uh, uh, studies we have done. And so I think we have the same problem here. This is not playing for your uh, the Zoom audio interface. We Somebody. hear a little bit uh, um, softer, actually. I wanted to remind you, Hans, um, yeah. we have three minutes left for the yeah. presentation, please. Mm -hmm. OK, then, um, then maybe let's uh, just uh, go. I skipped then the audio examples. And uh, yeah, maybe it is. It should be the problem. So, if it now, now it should be better. You need to apply that first, I guess. Okay. Let's go back to Reaper and apply, then it may work. Okay. Somebody say said something? Uh, it's me, Gerhard. No. Go back to Reaper and ap apply what you have just reset there. Ah. Then it should work. Okay. Okay, but maybe let's uh, let's go to the, to another example, maybe. Um, uh, the uh, machine study from uh, Johanni. I think that should be here the something on the ending. <laughs> Okay, I hope that was better to uh, hear. Yes, much better. So, of course, then we have here an orgone answer, uh, orgone. So then also we had some other participants uh, like Jacob Burton from the US and this little kazoo piece. So, and... Uh, Last minute, please. Yes. And then, of course, the last what we did is uh, was was a version of uh, DS era, and um, of course, just I show how we uh, you, we realized uh, um, we realized the uh, synthesizer because there are a very good uh, new um, um, online synthesizer. You just um, can uh, if you set it up, you can share links, and with the share links, you can. <laughs> Okay, I just demonstrate that. Um, oops. And uh, then, if we if we go back to the browser, and then we have here. So then. Okay. So what is the Porcupine 7 scale? Or if we have here another, this is the uh, machine scale. Of course I have to switch off that, otherwise they are sounding together. And here MIDI input. So. so as machine sounds uh, like an uh, Normal seven tone mode, but stretched that it on the seventh tone, uh, on the sixth uh, 
sixth step uh, is, it, it it makes the round. Mm -hmm. So okay, I think that is uh, that is uh, all uh, what I want want to show and. Um, and Gunther, uh, we must come to an end now, for we have only uh, eight minutes left to the next. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. And I stop my sharing. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Uh, it was. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> And it was very exciting for me to, to get knowledge about the development in Estonia. And especially I did want to hear more of the choirs, but they are very famous in the world. And I think the choirs of Estonia won a lot of competitions. And, and the voice especially has its difficulties with microtonal systems. And not only voices, but <laughs> instrumentalists too. And you gave a good example uh, what it's possible in real, in realizing and new music, especially microtonal music. Uh, I want to ask uh, around, are there some questions for you? Any questions in the group? I have a question. Okay. So, um, Hans, thank you for your presentation, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, um, I have a question uh, concerning, you know, um, the volunteer scale, uh, which you've been using uh, for quite a number of years now. And uh, also like the piece with the, with the two world bells, I thought that was particularly beautiful. Um, I. Uh, you know, as you know, I'm also someone who's been using the scale extensively, but lately I'm starting to uh, feel uh, somewhat, I wouldn't say unsatisfied, but I feel like um, there is something lacking, uh, which is um, the bone pierce scale tends to create some sort of a, um, more or less a, uh, a musical relationships in which uh, the tones are pretty equal and harmonic progressions are noticeable, but they they still ha don't have the same strength as in a, as in twelve tone uh, uh, EDO. Um, so, in other words, that same pull towards the tonic. Uh, there are several reasons for that. So, I was wondering, <clears throat> instead, of course, uh, turning back to um, you know twelve tone EDO. Uh, have you considered uh, going beyond uh, 13 EDO and like looking into 39 EDO or 65 EDO with, you know, bone pierce microtonality as a, as a way to enrich the harmonic repertoire? Mm. Yes, I have thought about to, uh, uh, to, me, uh, to uh, use the divisions of the uh, bone and pierce uh, step uh, or like uh, we have it, uh, we have the... Um, Divided in five uh, steps, and we have uh, have forty one EDO and uh, and um, or, uh, because uh, of course uh, there is a lack of uh, of uh, the melodies are every everything very very rough because this the smaller step is quite uh, quite large. I have thought about that, but uh, not uh, yet any uh, piece composed. On the other hand, I think. Uh, there are still uh, things uh, what for me are undiscovered. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I of course I feel, I know the um, uh, limitations. So I feel the limitations of this scale, and maybe just now uh, switching to twenty o uh, twenty two edo uh, is something what maybe compensates that for me. Um, but. Um, but uh, but I see, and uh, of course the. Uh, Tonality f feeling, of course, it is a problem. Uh, of course, uh, nobody can feel what is the uh, what uh, what chord is the tonic, and even if you start to modulate, then of course, uh, then of course, uh, like in this um, uh, deep sphere number three, so I'm modulating through, through all the thirteen uh, thirteen uh, keys and come back uh, to the uh, to the initial key, and uh, you can feel that it's going around, but uh, but this. Um, Tonicalization is a uh, problematic. I try to make some tricks or to support it, uh, supported by the uh, by rhythmical and uh, 
melodical uh, uh, issues, as of course uh, generally in uh, our traditional music, and tonic is not only the uh, um, the uh, harmony what is uh, preceded by subdominant and dominant. It is uh, also is uh, of course if you everybody who has studied Schenkerian theory knows that of course. Uh, thank you. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Jakob. Yeah, I was wondering, in one of your slides, you provide um, names for all the microtonal intervals. I forget which which scale it was. Um, and I was wondering where where you got the, the naming system for all of those intervals. Yeah, this is a, it's a little bit uh, mysterious, of course. Uh, generally, I... Uh, took the name from that uh, material what uh, Nicholas Osborne uh, offers us. Uh, so, and, uh, uh, and then uh, for 31 EDO, there were two, t uh, two uh, one table was the 31 EDO. So I, uh, I think I took them more or less from, uh, uh, from uh, Nicholas Osborne, or there is uh, an uh, interval name table in the Zenharmonic Wiki. Okay. Yeah, therefore, there is this uh, Just Intonation uh, gallery, and they have a lot of uh, names. And of course, if uh, uh, I, I like that, if if it is close to an uh, interval, what is uh, what is related to the seven or to the eleven, the name at septimal or undec undecimal, right. and uh, even if there are quite these uh, intervals, what are quite uh, quite often used in uh, Just Intonation community. Great, thank you. Um, I would have uh, a last question, uh, Hans Günther. Uh, I mean, I, I would have a few questions actually, but uh, just one. So for all of us, just uh, for this documentation. So these, uh, uh, the BP tubular bells you created, are they the first existing, existing ones? And are they at the EAMT in Tallinn? Uh, no, they are not the first existing. I have seen uh, tubular bells uh, on the page of uh, Stephen Fox, the uh, creator of the Bowl and Pierce clarinet. Uh, he built a little one and uh, of course I got uh, from there the idea and I saw that of course one, I uh, I saw the material in the, in the hardware store and it sounds, uh, uh, sounds nice. Of course it has lacks in the, it has some uh, too strong uh, high overtone sounds or, or um, unharmonic parts. It's not uh, not ideal. And then, of course, uh, making 33 uh, pitches, I tried what uh, out what, of course, more longer than two meters is hard to handle, and what are the smallest. <laughs> and then I That's got right. uh, uh, something. Um, what was uh, 33? Uh, 33 uh, pitches is uh, something like uh, two trit halves and uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that is quite uh, quite good for the work in this way, how I work with Paul and Pierce. Yes, yes, it's a beautiful work and it's uh, wonderful to see how multi-talented you are. <laughs> I just knew some parts of this, so it is really great that you shared uh, this uh, wonderful presentation with us. Okay, I pass you to my colleague. We are about to go on, I guess, and congratulations very much. Congratulations. Um, and I've seen that John Marco is already waiting with impatience. He had his guitar already. Hi, Marco. Hello, hello everyone. Hello everyone. And, and Professor Haidu, I think, is waiting too. So I will present uh, first Gian Marco. Gian Marco Ciampa carries out an interest concert activity that has led him to perform and hold master classes in four continents. Uh, he is also the winner of more than 40 international awards, including the Melbourne International Guitar Competition, Tokyo, and the European Guitar Competition, which award him with the Medal of the President of the Italian Republic. Well, in 2000, 2014, he was awarded the Golden Guitar as the best young talent by the prestigious Michele Pitaluga International Competition. On the occasion of the 2013 Memorial Day, he performs live on Rai Tre 
in front of the author is gathered in the Sala de Corazieri of the Quirinale in Roma. Important national and foreign newspapers, specialized medicine have dedicated articles, interviews, and quotes to his talents. Since 2016, he has been professor of conservatory, has held master classes in important Italian and foreign conservatories, such as Santa Cecilia in Rome and Sydney and Beijing, China, and the Royal Danish Academy of Copenhagen. He is active in chamber music at the moment. He collaborates in duo with the young cellist Erika Picotti and with the flutist Bianca Fiorito. Last year, Gianmarco won the audition for the position of guitarist in the Teatro del Maggio Musicale Fiorentino in Firenze. <laughs> and it's, it's a... It's okay. It's a professional <laughs> <a> <laughs> uh, career, yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Marco. Thank, thank you. Well, I think uh, Professor Georg Heidi is well known to you. He was in Salzburg two years ago. He grew up in Cologne, in Germany, and obtained diplomas in molecular biology and composition. So, Congratulations to you, <laughs> pharmacists <laughs> and composition. Uh, in 1994, he graduated from UC Berkeley. His teachers included Clarence Barlow, or Clarence Barlow, has all the different names, and David Wessel in Köln. He also audited Judge Ligeti's seminar in Hamburg. In May 2002, his interpret performance environment Quintet Net was employed in the Munich Biennale Opera production. And in the same year, he became professor of multimedia composition at the Hamburg University of Music and Drama. In 2004, he established Germany's first master program in multimedia composition and in 2012, the Center for Microtonal Music and Multimedia. In 2010, he was artist in residence with the Goethe Institute in Boston, as well as visiting professor at Northeastern University in USA and masterminded the first conference entirely devoted to the Bowen Peel scale. Bowen scale. In 2018, with the support of the German Ministry of Education and Research, he initiated the stage 2.0 project dedicated to music innovation. He also is author of numerous articles on the borderline of music, technology, and science as well. And a software application such Max score he made, Quintet Net, DigiStar, and real-time version of Stockhausen's Elektronische Studie Tour. Now, uh, the, the item is just intonation hybrid tuning on the classical guitar. A classic guitar is played by Gianmarco Ciampa. Oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, Gianmarco and I will um, uh, lead you through the uh, a piece of mine called uh, Regarding or RE dot guitar. Uh, RE stands for regarding, but also uh, stands for the, um, uh, the uh, initials of the Dedicati uh, Reinbert Evers, um, who actually suggested that we present this uh, piece here in uh, on this forum. It was uh, kind of nice that because uh, uh, I composed this piece uh, a few years ago, it's actually uh, 22 years by now, and we, he rarely uh, played it, but he remembered when he had a conversation with Agustin and then uh, suggested we, uh, uh, we perform it or at least uh, present it here. Uh, in this uh, uh, context. Um, also have a, a Gian Marco and I also have a very interesting story. Uh, his brother uh, happens to live in the same building as I, and we became friends. His wife uh, is also Chinese and so is mine. And they both have s two small uh, girls that uh, often play with each other. So as you can see, sometimes uh, these things are entirely personal and it, it ha I happen to a stumble upon a very, very talented uh, uh, young guitarist who is also 
open-minded and was interested in playing my piece and he does did uh, justice to it uh and um so that's one thing i also wanted to mention here um last year uh early uh, in early 2020 a cd um called beyond the horizon was uh, was published um uh, by the uh by Ginwin, a uh, german label and it contains um uh, a number of uh, Bolan Pierce compositions, some of them actually also with uh, uh, feature hybrid tunings where about the Bolan Pierce scale is combined with a tw with 1220 DO. And also it uh, has the features, the recording of a piece which I presented last time at the the um, the um, Mikro Turner Festival. So uh, let me know if you want to uh, get a copy. Also, uh, Jacob Elkin, I owe you still a transfer of the files. I promised it to you, and I totally forgot, so I will uh, make uh, make up for it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's dive right in. So I would like to talk about this piece. Uh, uh, this p guitar piece is uh, in just intonation, and as you know, the re uh, regular uh, um, uh, guitar has uh, has frets, so it's you know by you know shifting the just intonation uh, sonorities upwards by you know by uh, semitones then uh, you you actually get a hybrid tuning a hybrid uh, just intonation 12 video tuning uh, which uh, i have explored in this uh, piece and i will show you a few things here and i will step you through the to the piece and i will ask uh, Gianmarco to play some of the passages. So first of all, I probably need to share my screen and my sound. Um, so I'm gonna do this and um, my first question is whether you can hear um, and see my screen and hear the music. For instance, I'm going to play a sonority here um is do you do you actually hear this playback yeah it's playing wonderful that's yes. all i wanted to to hear so this piece is centered all around a just intonation sonority a harmony um for which um i have uh, used the scordatura on the um, the guitar and this a harmony is you can is represented by this chord here the notation uh, and by the um but the har the ratios here uh the interval ratios um so you have like a a fundamental based on the low e on the guitar uh a the a string is to tuned to a five over four the d string to a seven over four the g string to a um a nine over eight the um b string to a um b flat um quarter tone flat uh, 11 over uh, eight and the top string is tuned to a 17 over 16 which is nearly a tempered uh semitone from from the the original e tuning of this of the string so um john marco would you would you mind playing the and uh, the chord. So this is also um, um, a little faint. Um, I wonder how we can improve your sound. Do you listen me bad? The sound is, is not very, very strong. So I wonder how we can get a better sound. Mm. Do we? Do you need to hold the guitar maybe a little closer to the microphone, or I select like this? That's, much better. That's better. Yeah, much better. That's better. Okay. Yeah. And can you also play the um, the the uh, the the first harmonic? Ah, uh, you mean the first harmonic part? You mm mean? -hmm. Right. Did you know? You know. No. I mean the uh, the octave octave harmonic. Okay. Octave harmonic. Uh, okay. So you already did. Excellent. So what you get is a, a very um, resonant chord, which is beautiful in itself. And I also want to point out the um, the interval between the lowest string and the highest string, which is form which forms a 
uh, like a minor uh, ninth, or or you can also call it a, a minor second if you uh, apply octave to, addition to it. And uh, so, and that's a, a this interval, uh, tempered interval, um, quote unquote tempered, um, is uh, forms a bridge between the um, spectral uh, sonority of the just intonation chord and um, the um, um, uh, well-tempered or equal-tempered uh, world of, of, the, of 12 EDO. And this um, tension between those two worlds is, is being exploited in this uh, piece. And um, uh, so I would like to first give you a, a short overview of the first part, uh, which consists of a slow descent uh, um, performed on higher harmonics until we finally converge into a into the sonority, the um, spectral chord that we just uh, introduced. And uh, so I would like to ask um, uh, Gianmarco to perform, perform, perform the first part up to the fermata here. Sure. Thank you, Jamal. Can you, can you hear me good? Uh, there are the cer uh, strangely certain pitches are seem to be kind of uh, attenuated by your uh, audio settings. Maybe you can change the um, audio settings on your Zoom uh, so that uh, uh, I have done. I have done the original sound. I have done. Oh, so activated. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I can change. Uh, uh, okay, if you can. Uh, if you continue speaking, I can change setting in two minutes. Okay. So, okay. so I would like to show you now um, the location of this in, in max score. Uh, so what I did here in order to notate is I, I used the uh, several strategies for the. I started with the um, the um, just notating the open here and the uh, top staff. As you can see, I'm enjoying the um, Vishnagratsky uh, notation to uh, get a better position notation. Um, but then, Michael, you, can you cl close your mic very quick? Thank you. Um, and uh, so to, to do so, uh, I have um, uh, used a, a a tool here in 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 Max Score called the JI Entry Tool, um, which lists all um, major or the most important, at least, uh, uh, just intonation intervals, and I can enter these intervals into the score just by double double clicking on these intervals. So they can I can have, for instance, eleven over eight but simply by uh, clicking on uh, selecting this and double clicking on this, which I won't do right now. Um, but um, this is how I entered the, um, the, the, the open strings. And then I added, um, I added the harmonics with, with another tool. So I, so I can select um, one of these tones and I go to my, um, this is my, uh, the, the plugin structure of MaxScore. So there's a plugin called um, Spectral Chord Transform. And this will allow me to uh, set uh, any uh, um, partials uh, for a given, um, fundamental. So this is how I added the partials here in the, the second line. As you can see, I deliberately used E major, um, the, 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 the key of E major, because uh, um, the extended uh, Helmholtz Ellis just intonation notation, which I applied here, will take the key area into consideration. So the, the, uh, the fundamental uh, the imp is implicitly given by the, the key area, which of course, if I don't want to show this, I can also 
um, I can I can um, 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 hide hide the the key area, but I left it in so that you get get an impression of what the the actual uh, reference tone is. So as you can see here, uh, you have a, a you know a, a, a descent here which is uh, nearly chromatic. It uh, it's uneven in its interval size as you would expect uh, if we uh, multiply this by by, uh, by four, we get 28, and then we have 27, we have 25, then 24, 22, and then we start over again until we slowly but surely descend into a 15 over eight, which works as here, this case, in this case works like a um, um, half cadence because the, the actual fundamental here, the E is, is before that. And then uh, this starts over, with a plucked sound, which uh, uh, Gianmarco creates on the pegboard. And maybe Gianmarco, would you like to uh, demonstrate the, uh, the combination of the, of the harmonics with the, pluck, with the plucked uh, peg, pegboard sound? Yes, uh, sure, just one minute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you well. Yeah. It's better the sound, right? I think so, hope so hopefully. Okay, okay, so if we go, for example, yes, from after the fermata, right? So yes. it's like, yeah. Thank you. And uh, could you would you like to play the the, uh, the spectral chord again? Sure. The and then we part? have the hand. Yes, we have. <laughs> right. But this is like when it it you, you, you this is like the cadence and you arrive to this um to this uh, sonority finally. Um, and it's this is be, be repeated like three times. Then you get a little uh, uh, insertion here, or uh, some, uh, and then uh, the chord is is again be, being repeated twice. And then we um, uh, the second part uh, starts, which is an exploration of the of this chord, um, and in in a somewhat jazzy style. Um, here we have um, the chord sh being shifted up the frets, and um, and also we see um, subsets of the of the uh, the six tone chord, um, you know, move uh, selections uh, from a different uh, combination of strings, which uh, form a, uh, a changing shapes interrupted by barta pizzicati and arpeggiations. And that also slowly moves towards a, a climax uh, until we uh, finally arrive to that uh, spectral harmony again, and the uh, and the plucked sounds behind on the on the pegboard. Um, Gianmarco, would you like to play some of that? Yes, sure. <laughs> Uh, so, um, um, so then, um, 
after like a, a few repetitions of the of this high uh, plucked sound, um, uh, we'll get we'll get to in, in another section um, in which you hear a tuning alternatives given for these uh, Ds, and you can see the D is being produced on three different strings, and I can show you this on here. Um, First of all, this is the, the slow descent into the, the, the chord, which we've uh, just heard. And here are the tuning alternatives given by the, um, by the, um, uh, the three strings. This one is being given by the lowest string. This one is being given by the, by the A string, which is down to T sharp. And this one is uh, given by uh, the, the D, D string, which is tuned a septimal uh, comma down. And I, I can also uh, apply uh, uh, the, the, uh, a label, the just intonation ratio label, which will show you on the, uh, the intervals, the, the ratios that these, these correspond to. We have a 16 over nine um, D, a 225 over 128 D, and a seven over, uh, over four D. And what I'm doing in this part is like I'm playing with with this sonority uh, very uh, with you know we we heard a um, um, uh, um, these uh, uh, um, presentation by Yue Xiao uh, who also talked about the uh, the beatings that occur between uh, certain tones. So I'm exploiting the the complex beating that ex exists between the three alternatives. Um, um, so uh, Jamarco, would you would you mind playing this again? Yes, so the, the scores are like... Right. And, and then we go... And then we go... And then we go... And then again at the end. Thank you. Anyway. Right. Yes. And of course, in, in, in max score, you can actually also play, select these three notes and play them all together. But I have to say that I much prefer the original song. <laughs> I, 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 I always tell people, just use a synthesizer if you absolutely have to. Um, so um, now let's continue our, our, our um, trip here, because in certain ways, um, regarding guitar is like a trip. It like, takes you through different uh, sonic landscapes. And uh, so this one is then at the beginning of the second movement, which alternates between, yes, you guessed it, it's between F and E, like the, 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 the semitone that was already there as the well, between the, the highest and the lowest string. And that was called, that was, that I considered the bridge between just intonation and the, and the, and the 12 tone EDU world. Um, so we have like a, a crescendo, a decrescendo on the, on E and F, and on and another one here on uh, this string, which is uh, tuned down. Uh, yeah, by a um, yeah. This is uh, this is like the, the uh, by yes. septimal comma. So, yes. would you like to play maybe a, a um a few measures of that until maybe the beginning of the melody? Yes, sure. From the from the second part, right? Second part, yes. And as you can see now, this, uh, there's a, it's a little joke here. I called it Ala Turca. It's my uh, Ala Turca, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, it was premiered in, um, in, uh, in um, um, uh, Tbilisi in uh, Georgia, the Republic of Georgia. And um, so I kind of, um, the, the, the sonority here that I was um, able to produce was this adjusted tenation hybrid tuning. 
uh, kind of uh, reminded me of uh, uh, music from uh, Central Asia. And so that's why I called it Alla Turca um, as a reference to Mozart, but also to the music of the, 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 the peoples that live uh, beyond the, the, the Caucasian mountain range. Um, so um, maybe you can play also the, uh, a few measures, but I also want to point out that we have this melody, we have the, the drone here that uh, uh, formed by the, the bass note, and then uh, the, um, the chords, the spectral chords come in, they create a polyphony, uh, which then uh, eventually is, uh, leads to, a, um, to another uh, cadence in which um, these plucked sounds and some of the harmonics come back. But as you can also see, you see here in this case, in particular case, the, the, um, uh, the, the, these um, uh, minor second, uh, this, this minor second motive is also being weaved in again. Uh, I'm forming like a relatively dense um, uh, polyphony here. So, um, yeah, um, Jamarco, would you would you mind playing from where it says a la turca? Sure. <laughs> And, and now comes the, uh, the, the third movement here. Uh, and the third movement is, uh, um, um, is explores a different landscape. It's like uh, coming back from, uh, from, the, uh, from Central Asia, going right back to uh, Central Europe. And uh, you have this Lachmanesque um, preparation of the guitars focusing on, on uh, um, yet mainly on noises and extended uh, sonorities um, and uh, Darmarco uses a, a, a like a a, a little uh, you know a piece of wood a, a, like a, a bolt that he weaves between the strings um, and um, so that gives um, that lends a certain uh, bell-like quality to which is generated uh, so uh, do you mind playing a few more measures Sure. So I show you how to I, how to I prepare the guitar. So I put the stick here. Uh, I would have to share my screen. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So okay. I think you can see me. Okay. So I put the stick here between the strings, and that's then I play in this way. That gives us the resonation of guitar. And yes. We have to find also the the right part of the reason. Wait. <laughs> yes, I think here is a good part, for example, for my guitar because the resonation is good. So if we go to this, uh, to the beginning, for example, of the uh, third part.
Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I think you cannot hear very good resonance from here because, but maybe if we show the performance later, maybe the sound will be much better, I think, so. Yeah, um, thanks. Um, that, um, we also have a, a video prepared, probably it would have to, uh, this video on your own because I, Agustin just told me that we have uh, five, but probably now it's only four minutes left. Oh, okay. So in this case, we're just going to uh, go um, back to the uh, to my um, um, to the PDF, um, and um, I will show you um, one part which uh, uh, Gianmarco and I uh, like a lot, where uh, the the kind of bell-like quality of the uh, of the um, operation is comes to the foreground, and it starts here. Can you see my screen, Gianmarco? Yes. So if we could play here, starting at uh, quarter equals sixty. Yes. For this part, I have I, I have chosen to put the guitar on my legs, something like this, because I have to play that part of the guitar, and also at the same time I have to play with the off the right hand the guitar here, and uh, was an idea that I had to put the guitar like this because was easier and was more comfortable to play this part and uh, Georg liked this idea so <laughs> good <laughs> so yes I can play the beginning if you show me the score better oh no I have okay And then um, this motive is uh, then continued without the preparation variation, and eventually you can see last here. Last minute, please. Last minute, and eventually you will see that uh, the, um, the, um, the 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 spectral chord uh, comes again, grows to its like at least a, a, a six six note version of it, and then uh, the piece is being concluded by a polyphonic um, coda in which the, um, the the sonorities are played on the um, the spectral sonority is played on the three upper strings we have a descending melody which is a variation of the melody and of the of the harmonic descent that we have heard at the very beginning accompanied by um, the bass notes which give the whole thing a harmonic foundation you see you can see the, the melody which is also derived from the ala turca uh, part. Maybe we can pl play just 30 seconds of that. It's actually, its style is very classical for a guitarist, uh, but never, nonetheless, it ties everything that's been heard before together. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my uh, screen. Uh, and I will, um, in the meantime, um, uh, I was preparing, as you could see, um, a public link to this piece. So I will share this with all of you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm putting that in here. I'm, uh, I, I think it's still uploading. Uh, as we cannot perform this or play this movie here, the video here in this context, uh, for time reasons, it's, it's always that way. Your time passes much more quickly if you present something publicly. Uh, so please don't miss this piece. Uh, this was performed recently at a concert in Hamburg. Uh, so thank you, uh, everybody, for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very thank, you. Very much. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. Sure. It was an exciting experience for me to listen to the difference of just intonation and, and others. And, and it was wonderful and a wonderful interpretation and a wonderful composition. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to both. I, I wish I could hear you, Gianmarco, one day in Salzburg. You will play here. I hope to. I hope to. I hope to counsel. We'll see you together. <laughs> then. Thank you. And are there some questions around? Uh, and ask you to uh, interpretation to uh, to score. Uh, I can go first, mm -hmm. uh, while the others uh, maybe they think about it. Uh, uh, congratulations to you both for this uh, fantastic presentation. The music. I mean, it's, uh, I, I have to, I'm very passionate writing microtones for guitar. For me, the most important thing is to have a good plan with the scordatura and to create really a very wonderful atmosphere uh, through this uh, resonance. For me, this is really, this is the most important as an artist and you achieve this incredibly. The very interested, uh, interesting, uh, interested notate it. It's, uh, I've, I've never seen uh, for guitar anything like this. It's really, really, yes, really, true. really well done. <laughs> and uh, also very rich uh, timbrically. I mean, it's uh, so much, uh, it's, I mean, uh, it's not a, a question. It's just my compliments. I have so many compliments for you both, uh, uh, for both of you, yeah. And maybe but, in between somebody thought about any, any questions uh, for, for you guys. What I think is that anyway, the, the good thing that I found as a guitarist from this piece is that uh, also you are a guitarist, Agustin, so you, you know bad, you know very good that yeah, a lot composer, of times composer, it, composers, uh, yes, but I mean, you, you play mm -hmm. guitar and uh, you know that a lot of time composers that are not guitarists sometimes compose music that uh, uh, is not so playable or doesn't fit very well on the guitar because guitar is very difficult uh, writing because it's not uh, like it, it has just six strings and uh, some frets so it's I, I, I understand that it's very difficult for composers to reduce like in a, a little instrument let's say something like this but what I found very good here is that the, the piece was uh, everything was written uh, in an in, in, in intelligent way and uh, so everything fits very good in the guitar and uh, like all the resonance uh, and uh, the timbers and um, so it seems like that a guitarist anyway composed the piece also if a uh, Georg, uh, Georg played guitar actually he told me but uh, and so, so this is the uh, very good thing and also for me I find that uh, the kind of composition in a way it's uh, uh, like the big classical composer like that anyway it's always uh, also for contemporary music i think that uh, you have to recognize the idea of the composition and uh, so it's not like just messy things or messy notes but it's like you can see the idea also in a, a very different piece like this with the microtones and all um, uh, anyway different kind of music from the classical music, let's say, but you can still find the ideas and the uh, direction of the composition. So I think this is the most important things because especially for guitar, we have a lot of uh, new pieces of new music that it's like more about the gestures and more about uh, what they can do with the guitar, but not so much about the uh, 
the the things were yes. the, the procession of the composition. So uh, I found it very interesting here because uh, I mean uh, we can see that uh, Georg is a very good, good, very very good composer because the the old ideas of the composition is very clear and the direction of the fourth movement also uh, very clear. I think also for people that are not so get used to listen to contemporary music. So I think this is a very good achievement because. Uh, uh, it's not easy to do this with the contemporary music. Mm. Yes, congratulations. And I like very much also the dramaturgy of the piece. Yes. In, in, I mean, it, it adds more, uh, more richness uh, to the composition. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I wondered if we, if we could hear the uh, score diachora one more time on the guitar. Sorry? Uh, could we hear the tuning, the score diachora one more time on the guitar? Do you want to listen to the guitar? This is Cordatura. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, this is... Right? This? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Georg, can you hear me? I can hear yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah, how are you doing? Yeah. How hi. are you? Good morning, everyone from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> ah, okay. Um, I was listening. I very much enjoy. I think we're we're all getting at how nice that the music actually is also good, right? So it's not just that you're showing us magic tricks, but the music's also good, and it's beautifully played. And thank you. For, for that, for everybody. What it, it's nice for us to wake up to that. Um, second is, um, I want to know if you're conscious that uh, there's a um, uh, kind of a prepared piano quality. But even more than that, to me, is I've been thinking so much lately that there's really no virtue to staying in one tuning for a piece of music. I mean, if it's a new one, yes. But, you know, what... When you used equal temperament, I didn't hear it as equal temperament because I heard it as shifting in heights. Yes. Mm. Right? I mean, we all know that you can camouflage the equal temperament, but <clears throat> it wasn't even, you know, that wasn't the processing of it. So, I mean, it just in a way underscores what, what I've been trying to, why I don't, I don't understand why this hasn't hit more people, basically the polymicrotonal aspect of what you do. I mean, you're using the term hybrid and it's accurate, uh, but you know, you could add a third or you can move within just a period of time through several. I mean, I'm wondering what the, is there a virtue to not doing that? Is there a value except maybe on an academic level where someone's judging <laughs> that, you know, that, uh, that that might actually be a su. I, I don't want to use words like superior, but you know, a, a, a much freer uh, possibilities available. That the audience person isn't going to like take what you give them in advance in a backpack as they go up the mountain to listen to your music, right? It's just open vessels. So. I wanted to just share that and get a response. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry I have to interrupt uh, this conversation. I have to add for people who couldn't attend last year, you guys, Johnny and Georg, you had, I witnessed one of the most interesting conversations I ever saw um, <laughs> between two musicians. That was last year between uh, you both. I really enjoyed this. I will never forget that moment. But unfortunately, we have to move on. But I'm sure we will have we but, will find some time. But we will continue. To, yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm sure. I have some <laughs> questions for Georg about yeah this uh, lacking some something lacking in the in the here uh, in the BP system actually. But uh, uh, Ivan Cancilosi, oh, okay. I, it's I, already I, waiting. <laughs> and so we okay. have to go over to the next item. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very Thank much. you very much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, next item then, that's floating microtones for orchestra, which composed by Ivan Cancilosi. Uh, Ivan 
Are you there? Hello. Uh, hello. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see you again. Uh, <laughs> nice to see you years. again. <laughs> it was wonderful to meet you. And, yes, it was. And, and to characterize you, you are an Italian composer written here. And your musical style started by exploring microtonality in particular from, from Byzantic, Byzantine music, was a Byzantinish. And recently you developed dialogues between the visual and oral domains, something very interesting. Ivan started his musical education at the Conservatory of Giuseppe Verdi in Torino before moving to Estonia, and that's uh, mm -hmm. closing the circle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sweden for his bachelor and master's degrees, respectively in composition. After that, he worked as assistant teacher in composition and orchestration at the Royal Conservatory of Brussels. His artic artistic practice is an ongoing with regular international performances and commissions from leading performance group and professional orchestras like Birmingham Contemporary Music Group, a Promoteo Quartet, Duo du Bois, and the National Philharmonic Orchestra of Ukraine. Uh, Ivan participated at several international masterclasses. He attended an advanced course in composition by Salvatore Sharino in the Accademia Musicale Chigiana in Siena. He also is composing music for film. Ivan is also invited to give presentations in international contexts and musical institutions. Now he's giving us a presentation of floating microtones for orchestra. Yeah. Thank you. Your turn. Thank you very much. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Johannes and Augustine, for inviting me here. <clears throat> I would actually start right away sharing uh, my screen and um, with the, start right away with the presentation. And I hope it's going to work everything right as we checked yesterday. So can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Yes. Can Oh, yeah, okay. it's fine. Okay, great. It's right. Fine. So, uh, floating microtones <clears throat> applied for orchestra. I start right away with this painting. Um, this is a cataract three. It's a painting by Bridget Riley, as you might know. Um, and why this painting? I decided to translate this image into its sonic parallel version named Interference is the second movement of an orchestral work. And now I would like to give a, a little introduction to Bridget Riley and her approach to art and her connection to my music research. So she's a British painter, the most representative of the op art movement, standing for optical illusion art. A movement started in 1965 with the introduction of Rani's works to the public. <laughs> I'd like to quote from Rani's book a few key sentences to contribute to define depiction versus perception and make a parallel with music. She perceived the futility, indeed impossibility, of attempting to convey the experience of seeing by depicting an external subject. Well, in music, we might say depicting an idea, an emotion, a sound, a rhetorical speech. The pleasure of fear is a perfect balance between the inner and the outer. The depiction of a subject in nature is rooted in Riley's view precisely in that which is to be avoided, namely the attempt to recreate an earlier visual experience. Such attempts at depiction are in her view forlorn. The potential of working directly with relations of forms and colors and of liberating these elements from a purely descriptive role. 
the conventional relationship between the work of art and the observer, in our case, the listener, is reversed. The painting is no longer an inert object. Instead, it seems invested with life. This illusion being sustained by an, an active connection between the painting and the observer in the music uh, would be the music and the listener. As a result, the painting conveys its emotional content through the medium of perception, connecting with viewers' physical and psychological responses. Perception remains the medium. So I was thinking, can we think the same could happen with music? We might look for an active connection with musical works through liberating music elements from their descriptive role and conveys its emotional content through the medium of perception. I am wondering about the possibility to recreate, likewise, a perceptual experience in music with a not descriptive but perceptive content. In my artistic research, I address this topic, developing a dialogue between the visual and oral domains. Lisa Juice, for example, is an orchestral work that is also a graph of a system of parametric equations generating through complex harmonic emotions, beautiful harmonic figures. For this presentation, I will analyze the second movement interference of Lisa Juice orchestral work it's the only movement where uh, microtonality applies. In this process, I will try to translate cataract's image into its relative sonic parallel. Just a word um, on the role of microtones in this piece. It empowers the perception of expansion and contraction. Intervene effectively, in my opinion, in modeling the sonic figure accordingly to cataracts waveforms. About Lissajous um, for orchestra, it was commissioned uh, in 2017 by the National Philharmonic of Ukraine, and only in 2018 was possible to perform the premiere in Kiev. Uh, the conductor. Uh, was Bogdan Plish. And the Kiev Chamber Orchestra is a string orchestra. Okay, so um, now um, we are going through analyzing the structure of, of interference. The score, as you can see, is a, quote, quote, is a four quarters. Uh, it's 22 instruments or 22 sort of strings parts. Almost the entire orchestral gamut has been represented here. Register span from D sharp one up to E7. I'd like to introduce this table, which shows the pitch classes used in the harmonic structure, and they are taken from the hexatonic scale. So you can see on the left column, that uh, we have the original pitch class set, um, the three actually in red below. On top, actually, um, I, I uh, placed the, the microtone of fluctuation, which is a, a quarter tone uh, up. Uh, and then it's followed by a second part of section B is a uh, two microtone of fluctuation. One is upward, and one is downward by a uh, quarter tone. And then we have uh, a so-called interference uh, uh, event in section C, and where the, the structure uh, is falling, is, um, is, is, is dropping down in, let's say, um, by, uh, um, by a quarter note, um, sorry, by, uh, by um, by, uh, uh, yeah, by quarter note, and uh, we have still a microtonal fluctuation here. But then it's just moving up and down the structure, the whole structure, and at the end, just coming back to the, to the original pitch class set by a leap of three quarter, three quarter tones. Uh, I showed here the section D. Um, 
is not uh, uh, related to with the micro micro tonality anymore but it's just to show that i've just continued using the two whole tone scale tapes and they are represented here by the two pitch uh, class sets forming the first uh, whole tone scale and the second whole tone scale type okay yeah Okay, so the graphic uh, synopsis here is um, the structure of the piece. And uh, we can see here the outline, the part in red is the microtonal part in the, in the second movement. Um, if I may use a figurative speech or a metaphor, I'd like to describe the musical form as a liquid surface made of floating microwaves in, in um, equilibrium. So, uh, for example, the section A and B, uh, contemplation of the waters, steel surface characterized by ripple movements of microwaves. And then section C, the little interference and second contemplation. Then we have still in section C, the big interference break of waters equilibrium. Section D, the recreating of original form movement and the rest of the sections withdrawal of waters. So um, I picked some and applied throughout the entire movement different ways to approach and sonically represent the same image in the painting introduced before. So what, what we have here, uh, this section introduces, as I called, a relative motion multi-layer microtonal fluctuation, which I'm going to explain now. Um, so in this graph, uh, we have on the vertical axis, uh, of course, the pitch, and uh, the horizontal axis, we have the meter. In our case, is uh, three quarters. Um, about uh, the microtonal fluctuation, as uh, I wrote here, uh, this is the, the microtonal fluctuation by a quarter, quarter tone. Mm. And uh, the figuration here is. Uh, three quarters, which is actually has its specular version. And this um, figuration is shifting on each of the quarter note beat, creating three figuration types, as we can see here. One, two, and three. And three different layers plus the relative specular version created by the microtonal inflection. So what is a relative motion? As I mentioned before, the relative motion is now here represented here by the blue lines. Uh, they are moving backwards because of the odd figuration here, suggesting an illusion of mod of multi-layers, in this case, is a faster interlayer moving backwards, uh, which actually created the illusion of relative motion. And why I say it is faster? Because the odd figuration is a five eighths. And they are actually placed on each of the eight note beats. And because they are shorter, they are moving they create the illusion of moving backwards. Uh, this layer is represented by eight parts in the score. So two parts in uh, for viola uh, for the first viola uh, for the first violin, two parts for the second violin, two parts viola, uh, two cello, and one uh, for the double bass. The other parts um, are for the I call even figuration. Um, the mutual interaction can happen only between the three-quarter 
um, figuration and the 5 8 figuration. So it can't happen between uh, the same lines of the same figuration. This is the relative motion without even figuration. And this is aligning the parts tight together. We start to see more similarity with cataract three. The black one representing the regular or the meter figuration or even figuration. So now, um, about the change of, of thickness, as we can see here in the painting slide, I choose dynamic to represent this feature. And the use of dynamic contributes to both multi-layer waves perception, like these diagonal ripples that we see here. And for the thickness of the color, depicting half of the wave, enhancing the microtonal inflection. So the, the amplitude is enhancing. In this case, I choose to enhance the microtonal inflection. The regular distance between waves is ensured by the use of the hexatonic scale. In the beginning, the lines are homogeneous in the score. But from measure 37, colors are becoming thicker. The microtonal inflection, and from measure 62, I inverted the rows of colors. I mean, uh, meaning uh, enhancing the non microtonal part. In principle, dynamic works like this in a uh, attacco is in pianissimo in succession from top to bottom within the parts, and waves, ripples, effects are produced. Now we go to the second part of section B, poco più agitato, um, and that will show a possible, a second possible approach, how to sonically represent this into the score. Okay, so in this case, the microtonal fluctuation is moving now in both directions, upwards and downwards, by raising up and lowering down equal tempered notes by a quarter tone, forming now three figuration types shifting on each eight note beat, and with the relative specular version, creating a pattern of 24 figuration types the relative motion backward is not present here anymore. In 24 figuration types, they come from the two specular version. So this is one, and this is the specular one, and this is one, and the other one is here, that we can't see here. And so we have four, uh, multiplied actually six, six positions placed on the eight note beats here. And the waves tied together now creating a new pattern. On section C, Still, uh, we have the use of the microtones, but only one type of fluctuation, the upward. And here it is. What is changing here? Is the time signature? Now we have four quarters. Expanding the possibility of expressing pattern combinations. An exception for viola solo part that we're gonna take a look after. Um, and as we can see here on the left is the figuration now on the vertical axis. And represented here is the microtonal fluctuation 
upwards only. So why I said is an exception for the viola, for the first viola part? Because uh, we have a so-called temporary shifting figuration, um, meaning moving actually frontward. And why is moving frontward? Because we have a nine eights here, oh wait, yeah, nine eights here, nine eights here, and three fourths, and three quarters, sorry. And this pattern is actually repeating. So we have a temporary shifting, just uh, with the aiming to creating the illusion of, of the frontward motion. Uh, on section C, we have also this uh, event called the interference. And is represented here as an abrupt falling and destabilization of the structure, followed by restoration into the original equilibrium. Interference aiming to interfere the stillness of the sonic surface. I have a recapitulation table here. It is showing the most relevant features, like the meter that is changing from three quarters to four quarters, and the microtonal inflection starting section B just upward and then upward and downward and downward and then restoring the original one. The relative movement uh, or motion, which is actually also changing from uh, backwards this is the the meter and then we have only the meter and then we have uh, the meter and frontward motion by solo viola and so on in this case the figuration here are placed on different positions so the figuration is placed on quarter notes beat and on eight notes note beats and it just shows the different figuration where they are placed. Um, what they are creating, they are creating uh, possible pulsation patterns, which are theoretically possible to perceive. I do not guarantee that we can perceive all of these, but theoretically uh, they are produced. Um, as, uh, as here, for example, 24 is... Uh, is a four different figuration for the for this uh, for this figuration type and six for this figuration type is 24 multiplied two which is the two specular version and the same likewise for the other sections in the last one which is not microtonal anymore section d we have multiplied uh, two and again two because we have two uh, represent, representation of the whole tone scale and the two specular version. Okay. So we're ready to listen to the piece and I recommend uh, to raise a bit the volume because it's very, very soft in the beginning. And uh, for limited time, we need to start straight from section B. And I don't know if I can listen, we can listen, we have time for listen till the end, I don't know, but uh, uh, you tell me if it's too late, I will just stop it. And- um, We still have 10 minutes even. Okay, then I think it's, we can reach till the end of the piece, we have enough time. And uh, yeah, and just remind that section D is, uh, is uh, with no use of microtones. And um, I think we can just go and listen. Hope you enjoy. Sorry, I did a mistake. Okay.
Uh, Ivan, we didn't hear anything yet. We really? we can uh, hear your voice, but not the music. All right. Okay. Sorry. Let me. Um, okay. Okay. In this case, I think uh, I need to check if I sh did this option to sharing sound. I think I missed that one. So how to? Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so I make a second time the sharing. Yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to share the sound. <laughs> no problem. My I mistake. did the same before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we have it. Okay, I start from here. Uh, share the sound. Yeah. So it's from here. And so, can you see the 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 video now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Lovely, okay. great. Okay.
last minute even. Okay, I think we, we can do it. It's finished. Thank you. That was great. Congratulations, Thank you. Ivan. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Ivan, Ivan, yeah, it was a wonderful composition, and I think uh, a wonderful analysis you gave at once. Thank <laughs> or, you. For it was, uh, I think it had been most work to make the analysis and the uh, work itself had written from itself, isn't it? Like that. <laughs> that more, more work for analyzing then. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it took a lot of time for yeah. analysis. Yeah. The music came from itself. Well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, and, that's, and, that's and it's, it's good to hear. really a, a perfect transformation from the picture. It's really, that's, that's all that has been in the picture. And you made it to a movement, to music, and very exciting. And... And congratulations to you and to your orchestra. Thank you. Hope Thank you very made much. a perfect job. Really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they worked uh, for a week actually, mm -hmm. not only for my piece because it was like a concert for two composers. And they had the time to uh, practice. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of work because this is just the second movement. So it was three movements. <laughs> they worked a lot. It was yeah, really uh, mm -hmm. amazing. A really good job. Really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks to them. They're really uh, amazing. Thanks. I wonder if there are uh, questions uh, around to you, Ivan, to the work, and to the analysis, uh, to the picture. Yeah, actually, I, for me, actually, and yeah. an, an, analyzing this piece, uh, it was also the chance for me to take back this piece because it's from 2018. So I had to take back all my analysis and preparation papers and try to put together all the ideas because you know it's yeah. like forgotten you do it then you know you think okay. about another thing you know in the yeah, future yeah. but then uh -huh. it was like uh, mm -hmm. the chance to to put order in all my stuff about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well so uh, any questions in the group I think we are all impressed. <laughs> yeah, and in between, Ivan, I'd like to ask you if you can recommend any further readings about visual and aural domains. Mm -hmm. uh, or at I some said. point, it doesn't have to be now, but at some point, if you can, can share yeah. with us. I remember because when I was doing, I didn't actually complete, but when I was actually doing my PhD in England, I remember this um, coming forth ideas from other, but I, I, managed, I didn't manage actually to find any um, actual composers doing the, exactly the same thing. Because mm -hmm. of course, there are a lot of composers, they are, uh, they they work with image and music is is not yes, really yes. a new a new thing at all. But yeah. this way, I'm um, very you know personal and way I'm I'm uh, I'm pursuing. Uh, I couldn't find at the moment. Uh, I, I don't gar I don't guarantee. Maybe maybe, okay, maybe there are. Okay, there is. 
some noise. Yeah. Yeah. I don't okay. Know. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't know yeah. where it came. I thought it was from you, actually. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I don't I, have I, dogs. Okay. Sorry about <laughs> you know, that. No, and then and then I I so I got some names. Uh, honestly, not, uh, now I don't remember. They we are doing similar things, but the same things. Uh, no, but I I can I, I can definitely find something some material for you about uh, visual and oral domain. Yes. Uh, thank you. So I will much. search for it. Thank you. So any, you. any, any questions from anyone? We oh. still have uh, five minutes for questions. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, I think uh, that uh, some uh, classically uh, trained uh, musicians or some musicians used to jazz idiom, rock music idiom, have uh, some kind of ideal synchrony to uh, microtonal uh, not notations, they just uh, uh, don't uh, get why uh, should should be more uh, there should be more tones, and uh, you get uh, this work with an orchestra from Kiev, Ukraine, where I live. Uh, so, do you have some magic word, or maybe the conductor has it? Uh, ah. how, how, how to make uh, them train, trained musicians uh, to perform the microtones in their Yeah, it's a, very, it's a very good question. I don't know, it just happened. And uh, I was also lucky, and uh, they are, as I said, this is just a little part of the entire piece, which is microtonal. So, Otherwise, it's a uh, normally tuned uh, piece, uh, equal tempered. Um, uh, but the, the thing is, um, is a, I don't know if you could see from the score, but this is kind of easy uh, to play. You know, you just, you just actually uh, playing a quarter note, a quarter tone, um, actually is, is, a, is, is a kind of, you know, it's just... Uh, Raising up by quarter tone and flowing that, so you're not actually moving on the scale, you know, on a microtonal scale. And I try to make this her job, their job, as easy as possible. Um, the, in previous experiences, I, I knew is a challenge, especially for this is an orchestra, it's a completely classical orchestra, it's a fantastic orchestra, but it's, it's a classical train that they just classical repertoire and you know that's it and but you know the the, the conductor he he saw the score and he 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 liked somehow so he decided that it was possible to perform and uh, but i mean technically speaking is a uh, quite easy uh for for the for the performance honestly there are no big leaps that you have you know uh, tune in perfectly in time uh, is um, so I think that's that's why that's why <laughs> that's okay, why thank you. so <laughs> and, anyway I think the score should be uh, some sort of friendly for the performer at least uh, to some extent <laughs> <laughs> okay and who was the conductor again Ivan sorry uh, Bogdan, Bogdan Plish Bogdan Plish, I know, is actually uh, working in different European countries. So they are uh, touring in Europe. I don't know about the COVID now, but yeah, Bogdan Plish, S H S H. Um, but they are not used to play contemporary music. This was maybe an exception, or uh, it just happened. Sometimes good things happen. Thanks, yes, God. <laughs> yes. Con congratulations eh, to all of you. Thank you. Yeah. It belongs a, a great uh, conductor in the great orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was together. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was really lucky for you, but it, you know, you've earned this. <laughs> it's a great job. Yeah, I, I worked very, very much for this piece. I remember it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, really tough. Yeah, tough work. Very, very well planned, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Can we listen to the... Uh, do you have a video link that we can listen to the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Or can you upload for us in the chat or something like this? I will, uh, I will uh, forward to you the, the link for the video. If you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You send me too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Maybe one last question before we stretch a little bit uh, our legs. Break. Okay. Uh, 
So thank you very much, Ivan. Thank you. And Abbas. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. We'll make a short interruption. Uh,